the count if function. It's a simple function and on the surface it's quite basic to use. However, we're going to have a look at a little bit more in depth and what you can do with a counted function just by combining with each other and uh, adding and subtracting, etc. So let's have a look first at the problem. Let's do the basics of a counted function. Say, for instance, you want to find out how much cheese that you bought. Uh, you want to know how many che times cheese appears in a list. Well, this is what we can do here. So, for instance, in our spreadsheet I've set up here, and you can download the spreadsheet from the computer tutoring website, click on online training and click on Excel and then look on the count if function. And I'll provide a link for the count if function down below. So let's carry on. So click in G2 and then what I'm going to do is use this FX button at the top. So I don't know if you can see that one. We're going to click on that FX button and that will allow us to type in our function. Now, if you're looking for a particular function, we're looking for the count if function. You can do that at the top here. So I'm going to type in count if and click on go and it's going to find the count if function. So you can see there we go, I've typed it in there and it's appeared at the list. So I can double click at the list just on the second highlight there. So if I double click in the list here, the count if function, I'm inside the function argument box. Great, so the next time or next thing we're going to do is we're going to select a range. So I'm going to click on the B column and that's where all the products are. Now that's the range I need to check. And the reason I need to check that is because in that list is the cheese that I'm looking for. So if I now just move this down and now for the criteria, I'm going to click on cheese because that's the item that I want to count. And in fact, if I just zoom in and just show you there, you can already see that I bought cheese 41 times. Hopefully that's clear. What we'll do is we click on OK. And then we can see 41 times there. Now, the beauty of this is because I'm referring to a cell, as you can see up in the formula bar here, I'm referring to cell F2 here. I can change F cell F2 from cheese to anything in the list and it will recalculate. Let's have a test, shall we? So if I click on cheese, I'm going to type beer. How many times did I buy beer? Ah, I can see 43 times in that list. How many times did I buy lovely biscuits? The chocolate digestive I particularly like. There we go. That's 40 four times there and we can carry on with others as well to see how many times I've bought that. Well that's great. Now say for instance you wanted to use the count if function to work out how many orders between a particular date. Say for instance let's take between the 1st of March 2017 and the 20th of April 2017. Well again you can use the count if function for that. There are other functions available that we'll go through on another training video uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, so you can keep up to date with them but for this time and this time we're going to have a look just the count we can do this with the count if function a couple of those so the first thing we're going to do is going to click on g4 and i'm just going to type the count if function in so it's going to type in count uh, equals count if open bracket the range i'm going to look for is the date range comma uh, the criteria in this instance is going to be less than and I'm going to use the ampersand and then I use the mouse to click on the dates and then I close off my bracket. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on here. There we go. So as you can see, I've got the date range there, A to A. Then I've got the less than symbol within quotation marks there. The ampersand, the and symbol, and you can find that on your keyboard on the number seven. So you hold down shift and press seven. You can see that. And then I click on F4 because that's the date that I'm interested in. Brilliant. So if I press enter and I can see that there was 30 orders before the 1st of March 2017. So now I need to know how many orders were after the end date or the 20th of April 2017. So equals count if the range. Again, I'm going to check the dates comma after or the greater than symbol so if you're looking for that on the keyboard it's shift and full stop the less than is shift and comma and then ampersand shift and seven to get my ampersand and then i use my mouse to click on the end dates close my brackets and press enter and i can see there's 161 orders after that date so now i do a basic calculation to work out the total number of orders and then take away those two numbers so how do i do that well I use the count function. So equals count, not count if, just equals count. And then I click on 
the A at the top because that's the dates that I'm going to look for and then close off my brackets. So that will take the number, total number uh, there. Uh, I'm gonna press enter so you can see the result there. So you can see it's 215. So now if I go up to, if I double click, so I can just edit it, this formula. So now I just need to minus, and I'm gonna open the bracket here uh, so I can be sure that this part of the formula will calculate first. So it's open brackets, so minus open bracket G4 plus G5. So that's the, sum, the uh, order of the sum there. Let's just zoom in so you can see that one there. So there we go. So we've got the AA uh, minus open bracket G4 plus G5. So it's going to add these two together and then it's going to take this number and minus those there. So let's have a look and see what happens there. So press enter and I can see that from the 1st of March 2017 and including that date up to and including the 20th of April 2017 there were 24 orders literally it there is 24 rows that appear in that list of data and because I'm using cell references I can change that to so say I want to go to the 30th of April 2017 I can see that there's 30 so that's it so far. Again, if you, I mean, of course, if you wanted to, you can adapt this formula by including the count ifs in the number of orders formula. So you can do that and start to build a super formula there. But I'm not going to do that now. I'll leave that to you to work out that one out. Please post any comments or suggestions at the bottom. Please subscribe. Really would appreciate that. And just give it a thumbs up if you've uh, got something out of this video. Thank you so much for watching.